test test there we go all right you guys can hear me now hello everybody welcome to the stream today my name is sensei suplex and today we have the likes of the D, D sensei show episode 7. the date of recording this is september 15th 2023 and it is about 11 20 in the morning um as we're basically filming this whole series where i get to show you guys the insights into my day um, and more so how I am building up this giant living universe known as Project Aurora. It's going to feature more than 120 players. And it's been we've been doing it for, I think, at this point of this uh, time, about four or five years now. And uh, hopefully that um, all the individuals who are in chat will be here for another four to five years uh, in the future. And this is just, again, me documenting the journey and just uh, showing you guys the insights on what I do. But with that said, hello everybody. Welcome, uh, welcome Arcadio, Fat Viking, and Jay Thunderwood. Thank you guys for joining into the stream. You guys are freaking rock stars. Hope your, or hope your uh, guys' days, weeks have been amazing. I know mine's ha uh, mine have my days, mine days. <laughs> my days have been amazing. So uh, we're actually going to be talking a lot about um, some of the recent events that have happened in Project Aurora. Um, what's been going on? What's been exciting? What's been um, interesting? All of that craziness, right? Um, so I guess like, to give a little bit of a rundown on what we're going to be talking about or doing today, um, we are going to, uh, just be diving into sort of my thoughts, uh, before, during, and after running the first sessions of Soul Strikers as that campaign actually just, uh, got started, um, Mon or excuse me, Tuesday and Wednesday. And we just had C5 start the, uh, uh Monday beforehand and just sort of giving my thoughts and, uh, like sort of what was going on uh up here or whatever when i was running the game sessions uh after that we might uh we might need to plan for some staff meetings i think i'm already planned for them but if we need to do anything um then we'll be able to knock it out on here on stream right i know we have a staff meeting at one uh so i won't be able to stream for too long today but uh I'm glad you guys can still be here um and hang out until then uh, afterwards we're gonna be t um maybe making some random encounter tables uh for c5 factions um, with, uh, specifically for Sarath Prime and the Soul Strikers games. I don't know if the other DMs are going to be using any of these random encounter tables, but we're going to be uh, doing that. I've already actually made uh, a bunch of the random encounters. I just need to more so set them up onto uh, Homebrewery Crit um, and get them to be formatted in a right way. So we might like, I don't know, we might just use GPT or something to format it for us so then we can copy and paste it in because um, we already have the information. We just need to format it. Um, but we'll copy and paste it in and then uh, we'll fix it up and make it all nice and pretty and fix some things up uh, with your guys' sort of like oversight or oversight? Your guys' insights. There we go. <laughs> also, sub Kenzie. Yo, welcome to the stream. Uh, appreciate you for dropping on by. How you been? How you been? Long time no see. Um, also, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be recording the next uh, big Aurora promotion video. That is like one of the main big things that we have to do today. Um, it's a little bit of a not really it's not really a big video it's not as big as like the c5 video it's more so as it's more so like big and like okay we need to make sure that we nail this thing because uh i want to be able to hit this out of the park um since it's another promotion thing and then also it's uh it's only gonna be a minute long but i don't know we'll try our best <laughs> we'll try our best i know i'm gonna make a lot of mistakes so you guys can uh, make fun of me uh for all those when we get to it kenzie says been chilling and lurking in the shadows fair enough fair enough uh musica welcome hey good morning yo welcome to the stream appreciate you so let's go over a couple of in or a couple of uh like updates on what's been happening thus far so as i mentioned before uh continent 5 aka serith prime has finally dropped and it's been freaking insane seeing all the differing individuals from pretty much all around the world just jump in and get excited and get hyped get pumped for some soul strikers and more so we didn't have any um <laughs> um what is it we uh we didn't have a uh any of the like sessions from the other dungeon masters run this week but uh on monday we did sort of announce everything we started bringing in a bunch of new folks into the games and like giving them the roles they started introducing themselves and it was freaking awesome just seeing uh, more and more peeps uh, and then tuesday we had soul strikers premiere uh for session one it was freaking fantastic we'll talk more about that following up uh, we had soul strikers for group two jump on in and they brought it home and it was so freaking cool but uh, on thursday as j thunderwood actually just said they did ha or stratospheres group or thursday group did just have their session zero uh yesterday and i heard it was pretty cool and everybody's really really excited 
I can even give a little bit of insights into that, but I don't, but always take Stratosphere's word over me, my word because he is your DM. He's going to have things that might be different than how I would do things. So, but I'll talk more about it and give like you guys a little bit of insight. Maybe heck, if we have any uh, people who are in those games, maybe I can help them make characters on stream, you know? Um, but Friday, obviously it's today and we're just uh, streaming. We're doing some fun little stuff and being able to connect with you guys. Um, but also another thing happened uh, today on Friday and some of you guys may have saw it in the chat, but it's true. It is true. You're talking to a 3k Andy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, we actually did hit 3000 followers on Twitch. And now because I have announced that we've hit 3000 followers, you know, someone's going to be the funny guy and they're going to end up unfollowing. So then we hit 2999 and then we cry. It's, I don't make the rules. I just report them. So <laughs> woo! thank you everybody uh, for uh, being able to show your support um, and all that sort of awesomeness. Like, again, I really do appreciate you guys for dropping on by and just hanging out with uh, uh, hanging out with us over here. It's freaking it's freaking sick. Like, I, I always mention it almost every stream. I never really expect anybody to just sort of jump in on these streams as we're just doing random stuff. But it really does mean the world to me that each and every one of you guys are here to just hang out, even if it's for 10 seconds or 10 minutes or heck the whole time. Um, but even though we hit 3000 uh, followers, one thing that uh, I don't remember what uh, I don't remember who said this. I don't remember who said it. It, it was something along the lines. I'm going to butcher it, but it was just more so like I, I think it was like a New Year's quote of like whatever you're doing. I don't know. It's like you want to sort of I've always sort of viewed it where I always want to set um, the bar high whenever we make a goal or whenever we um, reach a goal, or whether it's a new sort of celebration thing. Um, I, I do celebrate, obviously, but it's more so like a case of it's I always sort of think of it as like, hey, this is just the beginning. Heck, yeah, we freaking got there, but we're only just beginning now. This is where things become real and this is where we can really start freaking rocking it uh, here and now. What I mean by that in like this sort of cons uh, in this uh, sort of context is that we hit 3K, but hey i'm ready i'm ready to hit 5k i'm ready to hit 10k and we got to work towards it we got to earn it and we got to bring you guys along here for the or along the ride for the adventure you know we have a lot of cool things sort of set up for project door i've mentioned them before but obviously with the website coming up in about two or so weeks I actually have a meeting for that tomorrow um we have so that's going to like streamline a lot of the player process and i know we were talking about um doing like a sort of mmorpg player dashboard for not just c5 but all of the continents and stuff so it can show like your character stats like your uh anything from like backstory like the dms that you play under when's your next session going to be um uh, and all that sort of stuff but also sh and then do some cool stuff where we'll have like an achievement system kind of like an actual mmorpg where um maybe like if you slay a dragon or whatever then you get an achievement and this forever added to your profile um and it's kind of just a cool little way to sort of reflect on hey here's how you've been able to affect aurora and here's all the cool things that you and your character were able to accomplish right and these things are going to stand the test of time for freaking years uh, and decades down the line right so lots of cool stuff um and that's just like one of them um right we i haven't even talked i haven't i've been like very very hush hush when it comes to like all the staff side uh revisions in the case of like how we're going to be improving aurora even further to give you guys any like players in chat or staff in chat or heck just even viewers in chat just like a better experience overall right <laughs> arcadia says i was able to train an elk to wield a stone great club but that counts as an achievement maybe so because uh, i was trying to think of a way to like how dungeon masters and players could actually do custom achievements so it's like here's a way how you don't have to necessarily be in the uh, like a finite sort of thing like this is what you have to do it could be just a dm thinking like hey man that was freaking awesome uh that's a moment that i'm going to be remembered for a long time let's immortalize it and then they give you a custom achievement for your character just to kind of be able to look back on and reflect it may maybe uh <laughs> i don't know maybe it won't be anything like super crazy like uh you know 10 minutes after you get the achievement maybe it will i don't know but i i really do think that for the long game like after several months of playing in aurora or maybe a year or two and then you look back at like your first achievement on like what you got or what you're able to do and accomplish and it's like oh yeah we freaking killed Kragor the orc i don't know and then you just sort of start start thinking back and reflecting on 
like oh man that was a freaking crazy moment i remember when tim hit that crazy nat 20 and he saved the day and blah 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 blah, blah, blah or whatever you know like those are the type of things that i really love um about aurora and the cool thing about it is it's not just like lore that's just like it's kind of irrelevant to everybody it's more so just lore that people actually lived uh lived through you know i think that's the cool part but 100% was so dope. Indeed, it was Viking, a hidden treasure. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Uh, Kenzie was saying, still bummed I couldn't join the world. Damn you, time zones. Ah, yeah, I know, I know. It, it is unfortunate. But hey, don't worry. In 2024, we're going to be doing, uh, hopefully, the plan is that we're going to be doing something similar um, for like that we're doing in C5 to pretty much all the continents and stuff c5 is kind of like the um i won't call it the test dummy but it's more so like the uh test drive for a lot of these systems that we've been either trying out in the background for a couple of months now or um we have a couple of new sort of systems that we are also sort of um trying out to see how they work in a sort of smaller contained setting right so like for example um c5 faction wars that was something that i tried out in astral odysseys a little while ago and it worked out it was okay it just we didn't have as much commitment from the uh like from all of the players because it was more so an optional thing so for c5 we're trying to like really get the data that we need by making an entire continent based off of faction wars to see if like this is something that's cool and that's fun for everybody involved right and then another thing that we're trying out is like hey where everybody in c5 you guys are going to get a uh art of your character maybe a poster of your character and stuff right so we're trying to figure out how we can do that um in more so a sort of like a, a somewhat mass scale uh with there being 40 players so that's 40 characters that are getting drawn and seeing how that can work out um and we we got a pretty much i think we got a pretty good system um going so far and i'm really just really really excited to see what we got uh coming down the lines and a bunch bunch more other stuff uh for sure that's just a little bit about it oh gosh uh, something in my eye so um we're about to go into the first topic but i guess uh before then let me give a quick little disclaimer um that you guys can feel free to ask me any sort of question regarding anything at all um i i like to get, really get into the nitty-gritty sort of uh insights into aurora and like my sort of day-to-day -day. so nothing's really like super off the table i guess unless it's inappropriate of course um, but yeah, like whether you want to talk to me about the deeming side, the D and D side, the business side or financial side, whatever, like, I don't really care too much. Like I'm pretty much an open book. Um, and like to talk about uh, relatively everything. Um, and just sort of like, uh, just document the journey. Like I said, we're just documenting the journey. So, uh, yeah. So feel free to ask any questions and I'll be able to like, uh, interject within myself and be able to, um, pretty much answer it. Um, when I get the chance. So let me real quick. Let me see. Jay, you messaged me. Uh, Discord message leads nowhere. You got it. Uh, Jay, I will fix that. Let's see. Let's see. Does that work? Ah, aha. So that's the reason why the Twitch links never work. Okay. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Jay. Uh, I, I freaking didn't know that was the reason why. All right. Yeah. Let me, let me fix that. Um, that seems to be the issue for a lot of my uh streams whenever i post them but now it's fixed so you're freaking awesome awesome marco yo one of the players from uh soul strikers welcome welcome my friend actually speaking of which we're gonna be talking about that right about now let me get a drink um i freaking love these things uh sparkling ice i don't think i'll ever be able to like stop drinking these bro <laughs> they're so good this like, so like i don't have soda really but like these things these are my little my dirty little secret <laughs> Taylor says, yo, what's good? Uh, sup, sup, Taylor? How's it going? How's it going? T-Blaze. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. So um, let's talk about it. So on Tuesday and Wednesday, we actually just had a uh, Soul Striker session one. And it was freaking insane. In fact, we're even going to be premiering it again on YouTube uh, for both sessions. Uh, Tuesday is going to have a session on, uh, what do you call it? or Tuesday session is going to be premiering today at around 4 p.m. Eastern time. So if you did miss the session because maybe it was too late or whatever, don't worry. You can actually check out the VOD and it's going to be live. So you're going to be able to see it with a bunch of people and see what the heck went down, right? And I believe the Wednesday VOD is going to be going live on Sunday. But what the heck happened? Let's break it down. Let's talk about it. And Marco, if you uh, actually, I would love to hear like all of your sort of, um, 
I wouldn't say, I don't know if feedback is the right word. It's more so like, uh, I would love to hear your guys' sort of thoughts on what, how, what you thought of like Soul Striker Session 1. And while we're doing that, Ultra Scribe coming on in with a 10 person raid. Welcome, Raiders. Hello, everybody. To the uh, welcome to the stream. My name is Sensei Suplex, and I will be your professional dungeon master, weaving the tales and more of the game that I am not running right now because it is the DD Sensei Show. And this is the show where I basically talk about all about uh, DD and the Living Universe project that I run, where it's 120 players, dozens of dungeon masters, all affecting the same world in real time um with cameos crossovers 15 player raid bosses you name it so hello everybody um hope you guys have had an awesome day um we're actually talking about one of these sessions that i just ran um uh, a couple days ago as you uh, jump on in so yeah so what was going on um in my head so it's oh boy so D, D is very much weird for me so i am a professional dungeon master but what does that actually mean so it basically means that people uh, for lack of a better term to put it bluntly they basically pay me to run D, &D games for them uh, simple as that and i basically use the money to reinvest it into uh the D, D games to basically make it as good as humanly possible and to put an experience that they will be raving and telling their friends about for months years decades all that good stuff right um so that in mind it's very much weird i approach it from multiple differing perspectives right um one of the one of the things is more so it's always been the sort of question of like okay well <clears throat> how do we want to or how do we want to just approach the general sort of game session like what do we got to do to prepare for or what do we do to prepare and make a game that is just that's going to just rock the player's socks off like what are, what are we going to have to do and it's always a it's definitely a question that the answer changes every single time from group to group but it also can change from session to session I think going into Soul Striker session one uh, across both groups was that I wanted to, because, oh man, so many different things they sort of cover. But I think because I was going to be DMing for, at least let's talk about uh, the Tuesday campaign, I was going to be DMing for a new bit of individuals. I don't think, was there anybody I had DMed before in that group? I DMed for Zypher. I, I DMed for Zypher. Who else uh, is in the group? um that um oh my gosh who, who else is in the group where i can just see uh what they're into give me give me two seconds let me i'm still getting used to all the players and stuff because we just like jumped in like a little while ago so i dm'd for zypher i dm'd for sout i dm'd for matt so much like for one session but that was really it i haven't i hadn't ever dm'd for marco never dm'd for frequent farling uh, or timetry um so we had like about three people if you're being nice um really like two uh, people who i deemed for uh before in the past so i kind of knew what their play styles were like and then i had four other individuals who i had never deemed before ever so i knew like a lot of them if uh, yeah all of them were actually in the west marks before and so they were at least familiar with the concept of aurora and like living universes uh to play in but they never deemed uh, in a game or played in a game with me so it was i, I tried to take it upon myself to uh or at least i tried um whether i did or not or that's up to the players i don't know marker can tell i tell you I, I tried to spend the couple of weeks leading up to the campaign just trying to hang out in chats get to know everyone um and stuff we like we had a session zero and then weeks uh leading up to it because we were prepping uh, and planning a whole bunch of stuff for constant five as a whole i i tried to like just sort of connect with them and just see like what they were into and just literally hang out with them just freaking shoot the shit with them <laughs> to put it lightly or to put it like uh, pretty much straight above board that's what uh, that's what we did and we got to hang out we got to talk about video games some of us we even got to play video games together others we were able to watch like freaking cartoons and anime together it was freaking sick you know just sort of like connecting with them outside of the game and just seeing more so and just asking them sometimes of just like hey um how or what are you looking for out of soul strikers like what are you most excited about what are you into in general and then taking all that bit of like sort of their thoughts and stuff and their wants and all that craziness and then just figuring out a way how to put it into the DD session or like figure out how to represent it in some way shape or form in the DD session so like for example when a lot of the individuals they were just like super super hyped with faction wars I like the whole concept of leading a faction i decided okay well hey instead i got a better idea what we'll do is we will actually make faction wars a big thing we're not going to just make it where it's like oh you know you are um 
leading over a faction it's just going to be npcs or whatever you're leading over what if we make it players that you're actually like working together with and being able to really connect from a massive sort of scale right um that was one thing that um uh and that was uh one thing that was sort of going on right and also marco i got your thingy uh we'll talk about it uh later after the stream though so yeah so that, that was just a cool way of like how i was able to like expand faction wars even crazier and crazier another indic set of individuals uh were like yeah we're really invested into the lore and we want to like just dive head first into this sort of setting so i said all right bet and i basically used some of the money to basically hire uh some writers or more so like lore scribers so people who just were freaking jazzed about project or and they just wanted to help out in any way shape or form but i didn't want to like have them just be a volunteer i wanted to compensate them for their work so i hired uh, some lore scribes to basically make up some lore in the setting and be able to present it in a cool freaking way and all i will say is without spoilers is that the presses are hot and the newspaper's been a gonna be fire so give it a check and that's gonna be uh dropping on monday it's so freaking cool oh my gosh frankenstorm or frank he did a great job doing it and just showing off uh, some of some, some cool stuff and that's only the beginning because oh man we, we got some crazy stuff planned for c5 especially towards like the end of the month right um so yeah that's basically like what the lore scribes do they just yeah jay uh they, they literally just make lore um that's obviously relevant to the setting and then they just present it in cool little funky ways uh that kind of helps immerse players into the world right um that's the general idea of what they do uh real quick i'm gonna answer a question uh three geese in a trench coat uh, i'm baby dm recently bought player's handbook and dmg currently reading thinking of running the new lost minds of Fandelver after the releasing after that releasing my players out into the sword coast map but i placed the cities myself on the map and erasing most of the history only keeping a skeleton structure of faerun on, of only the faerun stuff i like yeah that way i don't have to make my own complete map while i still have my own world that makes sense that makes sense i think that's exactly what um excuse me hold on one second there we go uh <clears throat> but yeah i think uh that's what uh my dm actually did and they uh they kind of yeah they took it yeah they did exactly that they we were playing lost minds of found delver and they kind of just had like the general pieces and then they built off upon it and they included a lot of our like backstories or whatever um to really flesh out the world i think you're on i think you're on the right track i think you're on the right track but yeah uh see if you can i'd say uh geese um do what you want i'm never gonna tell you how to run the games but see if you can uh get players even involved in the world building process see if like uh maybe they can even add and flesh out different portions of the world or maybe you can include their backstories to define like how certain areas of your world sort of function you know uh, that's what i've done and worked out for me maybe it'll work for you who knows uh, but yeah going back to soul strikers and continent five um so that's what i was trying to do uh, leading up to the um leading up to the events but man it was i'll tell you like i had prepared that session session one for such a long time like it had been done for a while and even then like i knew this i knew what was going to happen i like in the sense of like i knew you know what i needed to be ready for like i knew the beats that i had planned like i knew i had how do you say I knew my notes like I, I i prepared you know i prepared for the session i planned mentally and like all that sort of stuff right and i knew the players at this point like i'd been able to talk to a lot of them um and such but man i was freaking nervous i was nervous like oh my gosh after like spending weeks and like almost practically a month and a half of setting up this campaign it was just like so nerve-wracking like before like a couple of hours before the session i was like oh man this is the big thing or whatever if i don't freaking deliver i'm gonna feel like i let everybody down like oh shoot man <laughs> that sucked and it was just uh it, it was crazy i literally was like trying to have to figure out ways like okay i know that we've like even though like i'm a dm who's been dming for four to five years i think that that feeling it, it's a it's a uh, irritating but also a great feeling to have of just like that sort of anxiety and excitement before a new session a new adventure sort of beginning and i kept having to like tell myself like hey all we're doing is all we have to do is just make sure that this is 
we don't have to make sure like we this is going to be the next big thing we're not competing or anything like that like we're not competing against everybody like all the other dungeon masters like they played with we're not competing against like matt mercer and all these other like crazy talented dungeon masters and stuff like that it's not about that in fact all we're doing is just more so making sure of well two things really i always go back to these things i've mentioned them months and months and months before and i'll keep on mentioning them pretty much for years on end we only have to make sure of two things key number one we just got to make sure the players have fun that alone we don't have to worry about twitch chat we don't have to worry about staff we don't have to worry about freaking anything else we just got to make sure that the players at the game table are having fun and number two we just have to make sure the players at the game table are comfortable to express themselves and be able to interact with everything around right if they're not having if they're if number two isn't accomplished then they're not going to be able to uh, get number one so let's just make sure that we freaking rock it and make sure that the players above all else have a fun time and once I sort of put that in perspective, it helped a little bit or it helped a decent bit to just sort of reframe things into perspective of like, I don't have to worry about nailing that NPC voice or whatever. I don't really have to worry about like, <laughs> I don't have to worry about like getting Soul Strikers freaking uh, Decibel Dave's voice like this one. Good evening, Strikers. I don't have to worry about getting like all of that stuff done. It's just, hey, we're here to tell a story. Camaraderie, not competition. Exactly. It's like, hey, we're here to just tell a story and and like together like between the players and stuff and it's just like man that's all we got to worry about so let's let's go let's go <laughs> so oh man it, it's it's still crazy to sort of think about but that was like out of a movie scene <laughs> yeah that's the voice mod and stuff voice mod is a game changer geese <laughs> yeah i love it but yeah like i, I think uh once we were able to sort of conquer that then it is pretty good i think for session two though uh session two was or not session two but group two um that was on wednesday and i think even then i i think once i knocked out uh session one i was pretty confident for session two i knew a lot of the players were um like really really like f I, they, they they're anxious they're scared because it's like oh man we've been waiting for this for so freaking long right oh shoot uh oh wait the join hold on the join um thing is actually wrong what the heck Hold on, let me fix that, Django. Uh, that link is actually wrong. Let me, that's not good. Uh, I thought it was accurate. Okay. Uh huh. All right. Uh, that's not what it should be either. Let me let me go check this out. Uh, here. Let me let me fix it up for you. Let me let me fix it up for you uh, in the background while I'm talking about this. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, uh, that one's supposed to only join, or that's supposed to link to the the Discord, not like straight to like, hey, uh, you gotta pay to join this thing. No, 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 you, you ain't gotta do that. Hold on. Let me help you out, Django. Uh, first off, I'll just link the Discord. I like that. But yeah, I think uh, running the second session was... Um, oh, and also, thank you, uh, Amalgam uh, Exploits. Thank you so much for the follow. You're a freaking rock star and a legend. Thank you so much. Uh, but I think once uh, that session was done, Wednesday was like, oh man, this should be pretty easy. I knew the players were like uh, very much like a little bit... Not frightened, not scared. It was more so like... Phew, and nervousness you know going all all around all around and it was more so just a case of like hey guys this is we're just here to play D D. we're just here to have fun and stuff and this is just a test session like literally we're just here to test some stuff out and things if things don't work who cares it doesn't matter um like we're gonna be able to we got months and months and months um to play this game um so let's not worry about it or getting everything correct and perfect here today or not don't even worry about getting it correct like really ever let's just focus on what we know best and that's just playing D, &D. so that's kind of uh, how i sort of approached it and uh it worked out a little bit um uh, i mean again i want to know how much how well it worked out because that's up to the players to decide but <laughs> um once that was sort of said and done then we just freaking played D, &D and everybody was their little goofy little chaos ball selves and it was great but what was going on um what was going on during the session of soul strikers what was going on through my head then well oh man it was it was interesting <laughs> hold on i'll tell you guys in just a second so whenever we were doing um intros and stuff like i hadn't done a sort of intro for a game in a while now what is an intro what am i exactly referring to 
I'm referring to typically what I'll do is I will do like a recap uh, or a massive epic introduction into well the Aurora verse and stuff and I do that basically to really bring in everyone to the setting and just kind of know like hey it's time for D&D &D, let's rock and roll right whenever I say these couple of words everybody knows it's about to go down you know and um it, it starts with basically me saying gather around the table and let me tell you all a Sereth prime fable to gather around for these tale of warriors and misfits from afar for this my friends is the infamous tale of the soul strikers and it goes something like that i think i missed out on one part but i can kind of just remember it at this point like off the top of my head and whenever i do that then i go into like a whole like use the epic voice announcer like introduction blah 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 blah, blah. and after that like uh, players were sort of introducing themselves and stuff and i was man <laughs> they i would be like hey and talon um introduce yourself and describe your character and then i would mute <laughs> i'd mute i'd be like <gasps> oh god like breathe key breathe because i'm so i'm like freaking shaking over here i'm nervous i'm shaking quivering in my boots because i'm like everybody's talking in chat like holy crap how many people are in here because i hide my viewer count like i don't want to like even deal with that bit of anxiety i'm like oh god oh god what do i do fuck <laughs> and uh <laughs> and i'm just like trying to like literally uh breathe just take some deep breaths and realize oh wait we got this we've done this before we're gonna let this uh person do their thing and let them uh just let them again focus on having making sure that they have fun because i remember i was like rambling with a bunch of characters and stuff like that and i was like oh god oh no i'm not doing it perfect i'm not doing it perfect then just take a step back breathed just said hey we're just playing some dnd it's all good it's all good who cares um but yeah so that was basically going on in my head and then after i think once we got once i saw like all the players finally get introduced and i saw like the chemistry between them for uh especially like with the uh tuesday group because i already knew the wednesday group had the chemistry before him because they had played together anyways but especially seeing like the tuesday group all get along well and like freaking be some rock star role players it was man i was like bro we're in for a good one we're in for a goodie <laughs> oh man uh hold on let's see what we got so viking says okay i gotta go do stuff i'm uh so i have time for the meeting see you sensei have fun everyone all right see you, viking uh hopefully oh well, yeah i'll see you guys uh or i'll see you at 1 p.m my time uh, do, 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 do. uh three geese in a trench coat says i'm gonna play rl so i have to make do with funny voices and a session zero primer that we're all allowed to mess up voice uh try a role-playing voice thing that doesn't really work as long as we go with the flow and laugh at the situation not each other it will be so much fun yeah like uh, my goblin voice uh, might be really weird and off but that's just the character in game being funny as heck true actually that's something that i have done anytime i make a mistake i kind of like it's the <laughs> okay so a little bit off topic but not really this is this guy in wwe his name is vince mcmahon and they have a they have a thing in the business i don't know what the exact term but it's basically where if vince mcmahon makes a mistake oh you know him all right perfect perfect but if vince mcmahon makes a mistake no he didn't he didn't make a mistake he intentionally did that right it, it's intentionally a part of the like he always knew that was supposed to happen he did it on purpose so like let's say for example in a dnd uh, setting or perspective he'd be uh like you say oh um yeah <laughs> uh you you do a goblin voice it's like hello guys and this is my voice and you just somehow randomly have a voice crack or whatever like oh you know like just randomly while you're talking then did you did the dm just have a voice crack was that a mistake no it wasn't a mistake he intentionally did that and how do you play it off as a dm you improv it and you basically say oh yeah this this goblin's like going through freaking like they're <laughs> they're just uh turning like into an actual adult or something like i don't fucking know whatever right like they're, they're having voice cracks because they're actually like only a kid or a teenager now and now they're trying to <laughs> act really really tough and strong and stuff but they're failing miserably it's a feature not a bug exactly <laughs> it's not a bug it's a feature of the person exactly exactly and it's just sort of like it's funny because it's like um it sort of allows you to sort of embrace mistakes in a way and sort of just says hey man you're not going to be perfect but we can even learn from your sort of imperfections and we can sort of just like lean into them because hell sometimes they're funny you know sometimes they're funny uh, it doesn't work all the time but it works for me um a lot of the time all right, right. <laughs> like sometimes it, sometimes it's also a good way for me from what i've seen it, it just breaks 
like even if it's just a small slight fourth wall break sometimes it can just kind of reset the tension and just kind of bring everybody back in and just be like hey we're playing a d we're just playing a game we're just freaking rolling some math rocks and stuff and just <laughs> pretending we're elves and stuff and it's hilarious and you know it's great but yeah, you notice the goblin must have recently swallowed his squeaky toy. Yeah, like if I heard that, I'd, I think that'd be hilarious. Even if I know the DM messed up, I think that'd just be funny. And then sometimes even players will just go in, um, go in with that and they'll like, they'll just riff off of it. It's just like the kind of the yes and sort of thing, right? Like, oh, like maybe a player would just be like, oh, um, have you perhaps been around? Like, do you have a dog or something? Did you, did you like get into their squeaky toys or something? I don't fucking know. Like, <laughs> something like that or whatever um it's, it's just really cool but if you made a character uh jay thunderwood said if you made a character in Seraph prime um what faction would you join uh, man you can't ask me that i'm biased right i'm biased <laughs> oh man yeah and then those things become inside jokes yeah yeah i can't say that i can't say which faction i would join well, actually, I can. I'm going to answer your question with the answer you didn't want. Haha, -ha, look at me. I am smart. I'm going to actually choose the faction, the NPC factions, and tell you which one I would want to join. Um, <laughs> I think I know which one is my favorite. It's the simplest, it, but it's so, I just think the concept of it is so freaking hilarious. It's so dumb. I love it. <laughs> I, I love it. They're just awful people. <laughs> and... <laughs> So if I had an MP, if I had a player character, because I actually want to play this, so we have a uh, well, we have a cleric subclass, and it's called a wealth cleric, and basically their whole thing is about like making money and all that stuff. And what the reason why it even exists in Aurora is because one of the players um, that I had DM'd for, or no, I didn't DM for this campaign, but they just wanted to use the wealth cleric domain, so I had to make it for them in DM to Beyond, and then add it in. And I was like, yeah, this seems pretty cool. Fucking, I'll add an Aurora. Why not? And they played it, and it was so freaking cool. And I was like, you know what? I want to play it i have a character for i have a character concept and i literally stole this character concept from uh this will there's, there's a purpose to this story trust me um but i stole this character concept from literally sly cooper um the fourth one thieves in time so if anybody knows that game special shout out to you you're freaking cool you're super freaking cool um but there was this one guy uh who is a, basically a thief and his idea is that he is a bear and he literally goes back in time like he, he he's able to time travel and he goes back in time and he draws a bunch of these paintings because he's an artist cool he's a freaking bear that's an artist um and he draws all these paintings and stuff and he then buries them he buries them into the ground uh, and all that craziness now he's go now i mentioned what I, I remember what i mentioned before this guy's going back in time but how far is he going back in time well, he goes back as far as humanly possible. And he <laughs> goes to the prehistoric times. And then the whole scam is that he then, after burying them in prehistoric times, he fast forwards super far into the future, like in modern day time, goes back to where it was originally, digs them up, and then sells them and presents them as premium ancient paintings and texts from cavemen and then sells them for millions of gold and dollars it is the funniest thing i've ever seen or ever heard of like that's the biggest scam and the like i just think it's hilarious and like you know what honestly if you're going through all of that of the painting the time travel the selling bro you deserve the scam you deserve it <laughs> and i was like you know what i want to play that character like <laughs> it's just a D, &D setting because that just sounds hilarious to me <laughs> And I don't know, I just, we have Bearkin, um, we have Bear Folk or whatever, and then we also have, uh, what do you call it, the Wealth Cleric Domain. So, what I would want to do, now to answer your question, Jay Thunderwood, there is a faction that is just like, they're an enemy NPC, they're an enemy NPC faction, but they are individuals who literally are just obsessed with gold and wealth and stuff like that, and they just, or they oppose one of the other factions who is like, they respect, um, like when you die, it's only the beginning and stuff like that. And they believe that too. When they, when you die, it is the only the beginning, but it's more so it's the beginning of a great life as now you will basically die with all the wealth that you have gained throughout the like material plane and stuff like that. And you'll be able to live like a king in the underworld. And that is the Servitor Ori Guardians of Wealth. And yeah, that's basically what they do. They basically 
hoard a bunch of wealth as much as they possibly can. They do whatever they, they, they can do to get as much money as possible. They'll freaking scam, they'll steal, they'll freaking go back in time and create paintings and stuff and then just sell them for millions or whatever. Like a ridiculous, like to almost a comedically absurd stance. They're kind of like your typical cartoon villains. Well, like how I'm going to play them, like whenever I run for them. They're going to be like your standard, like mustache twirling villains or whatever <laughs> that are just doing ridiculous, stupid stuff. And I think that would just be hilarious to role play um, in some way, shape or form. So that's what the fa <laughs> that's the faction I would join, because I think I just think it's funny. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's just funny and clerics fun, you know, clerics fun. So there's my long winded answer of what faction I would play. Um, <laughs> and yeah. So that's respectable as hell. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. Oh man. Taylor Blaze says, or T Blaze says, how would you balance a homebrew subclass? I wrote up a blood hunter subclass that's focused on poison, acid, damage, controlling the field, and allowing the for those damage types to damage foes that couldn't. So that's a it's a broad question, but I'll give you some tips that I have done um, or have enacted to balance my classes. First things first. I have to pick a theme and I have to stick with it. And the theme is consistent of two parts. What is the aesthetic? Like what is the thematic that I'm going for with this class? And then number two would be, what is the play style that I am envisioning for this subclass? Those are the two things that I have to focus on the most. We Once we figure out what those two things are, that will guide a lot of my decisions, right? Now, why is that important? Well, I, I don't need to necessarily go. I think it's pretty straightforward on why it's important, but it will sort of help you eliminate all this stuff that's like, oh, shoot, I think this would be cool. Oh, shoot, I think this would be cool. Or I think this would be cool. And it eliminates all that sort of fluff. And that can lead for me how it's uh, worked for me is like, if I have all that sort of fluff, then what's going to happen is I'm going to overload the subclass and it's going to lose its sort of identity or its purpose and just be a cool homebrew thing, but it's just gonna be just everything everywhere. Nothing's gonna make sense. And it basically pleases no one, right? And yeah, so that's why I always make sure um, to focus on that. Then when it comes to more some mechanical things, what I will do is I will more so just take existing features and either use them in the scope of this uh, subclass. And sometimes that's good enough. Like you, sometimes you don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel that I've learned. A lot of the times this can be like a cool subclass can just be, well, what if we had the thematic of, what if there was a barbarian subclass that could basically go beyond their normal limits? Like they were, they already are at the peak epitome of strength, but what if they could more so now become the peak epitome of endurance as well, right? What if we had that? And then mechanically, what if this was a subclass of Barbarian that actually got Action Surge, but it was a lower version of Action Surge? Like maybe it's something that they could do once per long rest or twice per long rest or whatever, right? The, there's the thematic of like going past the limits and endurance or being a pinnacle of endurance. Here's the mechanic. I didn't change anything besides like taking the basic ability and then maybe just sort of nerfing it or maybe just tweaking it uh, for like balance purposes and stuff. Whether that needs to be it needs to be stronger or if it needs to be weaker to give other classes identity, and that's really it. That's a uh, that's kind of what I do. Now, granted, there are sometimes I will come up with differing new abilities, but I you the decision making process before or for that thing is okay. What's the thematic and what's the play style that I'm going for, right? All that stuff. So I hope that helps um, you out a little bit. I know it's not gonna because again it's a broad question, but I hope it sort of helps you out even a, even if it's just like saves you about 10 minutes worth of time then hey uh i guess i did my job <laughs> you know um uh, let's see let's see all right going back to um going back to soul strikers and stuff um so wrapping up um uh, on our final thoughts so i think that after deeming for both of the campaigns i think that soul strikers is going to be something uh, hopefully it's going to be something special we're gonna need to see if we can like truly keep up the momentum. And I think that's going to be determined by the next sessions. Cause the first session was so straightforward and like what the characters are kind of doing, you know, it's the trial run. It's the, hey, you guys are jumping into the arena, you're having to fight for your lives and like you're bringing your entire faction in. 
but I think the real fun and I think the real campaign begins next session because that's going to be them exploring the city, getting into a bunch of shenanigans and figuring out which direction they want to take the campaign in. And that can be in dozens, hundreds of different ways. And whatever they decide there in that second session or like even the future sessions past that, it's gonna determine how that affects the other campaigns with Stratosphere's campaigns or Firemaker's campaigns and such. And those campaigns as well are going to trickle down and they're gonna affect the Faction Wars missions as well. So I think I'm, I'm really excited to see what goes on. Uh, Cause it's been so long since I've been able to DM a campaign like this. So I'm just overall excited, well, very, very much excited um <clears throat> so yeah that's uh basically my thoughts on soul strikers um really really fun campaign so far awesome people um let's we'll see what happens from here all righty uh let's continue on uh, we got a couple other things i want to spend probably the last 30 ish minutes recording so we're gonna spend another 15 minutes trying to cover some topics and such um so what do we got today or what can we do so for my meeting i'm just gonna real quick just uh try to um i'm gonna try to uh set up or make sure basically like i'm really prepared for everything this could probably take like only 10 minutes if even that but uh yeah we'll see um would you say the assassin's faction is neutral and less evil interested in them with a character i use for a one shot um t blaze in regards to uh, which uh faction are you talking about um i wouldn't I, I wouldn't know uh i only i know the names of them i just don't know um which one's the exact assassin faction you're talking about jay thunderwood are you hoping the campaigns will be able to continue past december or you think december will be your hard stopping point december will be the hard stopping point for sure but it will because the reason why I, i'll talk about that in a second but um but then the like constant five can continue like in january it probably will continue in january and stuff who are going to be the dms for it i mean probably the same dms i imagine I, like i i imagine it would be um and same people and stuff like that the structure of it i can't really confirm anything because i'm not a hundred thousand percent sure on how everything will be you know it, it can change very it can, it can change um from like in a week from now you know shadow shanti are they neutral or evil i mean i think they're i think a lot of the factions they're not necessarily there's no alignment towards them i think we did that on purpose and i think the um what do you say the uh the um players who made the factions would probably agree there isn't really an alignment like uh, there's people like a faction more so has their own ideals and it's more so a case of how your character interprets and lives by those ideals is completely up to you for example a shadow ashanti could be a, like assassins for example yeah their business is in killing people but an assassin could also be an individual who assassinates tyrants who assassinates warlords who do evil evil things right but an assassin could also be an individual who assassinates people just for the sake of it or fun you know Putting that in the concept of a concept of uh, the Shadow of Shanti, I think the same could uh, go for them as well. It's you can do whatever you wish. It's just how you want your character to interpret it. I don't think um, the the Shadow of Shanti are evil by any means, because Siler is more so like the good aligned individual, good aligned or neutral aligned individual, and you could easily see how like uh, Pelsius or whatever they could be more neutral maybe even evil uh in, or per se right but it's just up to your own interpretation of it any i think everything's full game or anything is a uh, fair game so let's look at the um agendas for what we got uh is there anything i don't think there's anything i need to necessarily prepare uh, let's just check real quick okay dokie so uh, let me think agenda faction wars updates and request um is there anything faction wars application look over and acceptance i need to look over the uh faction wars thing here let me uh let me open up the freaking document faction wars managers okay let me look at that how many responses we got we got 13 that's pretty good not bad not bad at all um we need more we definitely need more actually i'll actually talk about that in a second but not terrible not terrible not bad at all 
I mean, I haven't really promoted it. Actually, I do need to make a... Oh, shoot. That's another video I need to make. Oh, my gosh. There's so many videos I need to make. I still need to make the Kickstarter video as well. Man, so much stuff. So much stuff. All right. Um, but regardless, uh, let's go to... Hold on. Oh, let me... Stop chat. No, where is it? Meeting agenda. There we go. Um, but yeah, I, I think we should be good enough for that, for what we got prepared. Lower scribe updates. Yeah, we don't need to worry about anything for that. We're already good. Community updates. Eh, it's nothing for me. Project or timeline. Oh, wait, this is the uh, old news. There we go. Um, sure players are selecting the correct factions. Yeah, I think we're good. Round table. I think we're good. Goal setting and task creation. Yeah, I think we're good. Also, Black Saka. Yo, welcome to the stream. Appreciate you for jumping on in. Uh, we're working on some D&D stuff. Um, and preparing the easy pretty much the giant living universe featuring 120 plus players year <laughs> what's up what's up uh we'll get what do we got uh for anything else d5 uh, c5 dm staff meeting oh my gosh glass about to break i tried to take them up take them off um <clears throat> faction wars mission review i actually do need to uh look over that as well uh, I, I need to look over that. Oh my gosh, so many different things. And lore additions. Yeah, we need to talk about that. Um, so I need to go over some more cool stuff. Roundtable, goal setting, character creation. Or not character creation, goal setting, attack creation. Yeah, I think all the, uh, I think all my meeting stuff is pretty much done and prepared for. I don't really got to do anything. So cool. Knock that off uh wizard king yo what's up buddy uh he's gonna say how are you doing i'm doing good also i'm gonna check your dm uh, in a bit just a lot of or a lot of things happen peace a uh, recent couple of days lots of things to sort of manage and worry about so i just haven't been able to like check dms if you looked over like i have like five six seven dms that i have not opened yet <laughs> i'm so sorry uh Saka says uh 120 bro that is nuts sounds extremely interesting hope you're not draining yourself too much well don't worry that's what we got staff for uh but no so basically i guess the way it works uh Sokka, is that there is dozens of dungeon masters hundreds of players and we basically all run our games in the same living breathing universe and essentially everything every action that anybody takes can affect another group in multiple differing ways right so we have cameos we have crossovers we have raid bosses um that can be up to 15 players or more and it's freaking insane it's super super cool we also have a whole thing where we do we have an entire dedicated staff team that runs weekly events so people uh can basically uh in and out of the game they can make friends and just be able to get to know more people around pretty much the entire world and all that craziness um so for c5 specifically um though we i'm not gonna lie to you and stuff like that bro uh, we we do charge for the games and stuff like that and the reason why is because i mentioned before we have a staff dedicated staff team of individuals and these are folks who are, who are literally working like nine to five jobs and then still trying to put on a freaking crazy experience for all the players right so i try to like compensate them um and we just basically have the players uh, pretty much pay for them to be able to put on the crazy sort of stuff that we're able to do but we actually have a bunch of uh free games that are getting ready to drop soon and we also have a cool thing that i was actually mentioned just a couple of minutes ago uh faction wars where um people can jump in and they can basically help support the project by just jumping in and choosing a faction and then just pretty much um doing this or participating in this little weekly mini game that we got going on and we need as we need a lot of people to be able to join in because we're gonna have we have night well we're going to at the end of it have 90 people involved right now we're taking about 30 so uh we have 30 or 13 people who have applied and it's again completely free anybody can do it and it literally takes really next to no commitment so hey if that sounds interesting to anybody in the chat i'll drop the link you guys can join um and basically be a part of this giant crazy thing and leave your mark in any way shape or form uh sock says i just excuse me uh, Sokka says i just got into DD two months and i love it man oh man i remember when i was first getting into DD. like that was gosh super free. it's so crazy like to think that I, I was the guy who never wanted to play TTRPGs because I thought it was just freaking super nerdy and weird. Like, I'll be honest with you, I was that guy. Um, like, I, I never wanted to join or learn about World of Warcraft or Dungeons and Dragons and stuff, right? I, I always just thought it was too nerdy. Yet, I always was into video games. I was heavily into anime and stuff like that. 
uh, heavily into comics, you name it, right? Everything nerd, I was into it, and I just never wanted to touch TTRPGs for some reason. I tried it out for, like, even just, like, the character creation portion for, what, about a week or two and i fell in love with the game and fast forward a couple of years later and now we're doing this we're running games for 120 people um and just trying to do the best we can right so yeah it, it's insane it's insane i want as many people to be able to at least try dnd as possible uh mr um says do you limit how many are a part of each faction to balance them yeah we do we do um so we're letting people join in like in waves and stuff so i believe like this week we only will have three people who will join each faction. So three people are gonna go join the Shadow of Shanti, three people are gonna join Vin uh, the Venator Society and so forth, right? And then the next week we'll have three more people or I think two more people will be able to join each faction and we're gonna just split them off, off the places and so on and so on, so on and so on and so on. And we're gonna keep kind of doing that on a week by week basis, right? So this way we can ensure that everybody is playing in factions that they actually wanna play in, but also that, um, we're not having one, uh, let's say a popular faction being overwhelmed with, or having more individuals than everyone else, right? Uh, but yeah, that, that's kind of how that works. And we have like an entire like dedicated staff team that are running, that's running faction wars. So they're like, they're on the ball, they're, they're, they're rocking it. We're actually, I'm gonna be meeting up with them in a couple of minutes uh, after the stream. Uh, Sokka was saying, uh, it's funny because I was the opposite. I always wanted to try and never got uh, the chance. And my homie Christian put me on uh, from the care and from the character creation, I fell in love. It'd be crazy if you were talking about the same Christian I was. Uh, Christian, the uh, they go by of Earth and Iron or whatever in the Discord. That'd be insane if you were talking about this. We were talking about the same person. <laughs> oh man, that, that's freaking awesome though. Like literally from the character creation, I fell in love too. Like that's what that's what did it for me. That's what that's what did it. Uh, T Blaze over on YouTube says, My first uh, d, d character died before a corrupted god, and he thought he could 1v1 them. Good old Dragonborn Fighter Barbarian. Oh man, I want to play another Dragonborn. It's been so long since I played one. I love him. Oh man. So I think we got, um, we only got a little bit of time left. So let's knock out. Here's what we'll do, chat. Here's what we'll do. So for my streams i always sort of do a thing where i like show you guys the insights and the processes on how i kind of run things what we got to do next is we got to make some videos uh and stuff um we gotta we're gonna post them on tiktok and youtube and just basically again promote aurora we're gonna even talk a little bit more about aurora here and now so i have a phone and a script or a teleprompter over here uh that we're going to hook up and basically we're going to film this video so we are uh so we can just basically have it all recorded and then we can just edit it up and be good to go so that's the plan also the cool thing is like um you guys get to make fun of me as i mess up like twenty thousand times and such and you guys just get to see the process and also even learn a little bit more about um uh learn more about the uh, pretty much aurora Saka so says, yeah, I asked Mahomie very nervously if I could reverse an Ice Goliath race to make a Fire Goliath instead. And when he accepted it, we went over it. And man, I'm in love with this game. Funny enough, there is a player, one of my players right now, his name is Marco. I don't know if he's in the chat. He did exactly that. Um, his name is Istaran of Clan Istaran. Uh, <laughs> and he's literally like, uh, he's a descendant from Fire Giants rather than uh, like your typical, what is it, Frost Giants? Yeah, I think Frost Giants and stuff. Uh, it's freaking cool. Let me see if I can find the poster for it and then show you guys. Um, so, so, yeah, yeah, it's, it's really, really cool. I'm trying to find the uh, thing. Stone Giants? Are they from Stone Giants? Oh, I thought it was Frost Giants. Why do they have resistance to cold damage then? That's so weird. Yeah, Frank, explain that. I, I don't get that. Well, why, why are, okay, if they're Stone Giants, why do they have resistance to... Well, I guess, yeah, that makes sense because Stone's Endurance. But, like... Why cold resistance? I don't know. I guess they didn't want to give him like what bludgeoning resistance or something. I don't. I don't freaking know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Whatever. Here, I'll just show you the. Uh, I'll just show you my screen, and we're gonna do it this way. So we're gonna go to here. We're gonna go to here. Announcements. Scroll up. So Easteron uh, is this character, um, and he is basically like a ten foot five freaking uh fire jump well fire goliath so yeah this was the poster that we were able to make with the um uh with the funds from the games and all that stuff and it's so freaking cool the artist is uh panda 
um they're not in chat right now but they're freaking super super cool so uh definitely go shout them or if you want a commission for them to draw your character uh definitely recommend them um i'll drop their link in chat all right y'all uh let's do this so let's set up the overlay um so we are good to go i'm gonna be taking some things off uh i'm gonna have alert boxes also turned off so for those of you guys who follow thank you so much but i'm going to just take it uh so like it doesn't interrupt the uh so it doesn't interrupt the uh recording right because that'd be awkward fa says oh oh my gosh i i thought i was uh i thought i was uh responding to you oh my gosh you slipped my mind uh hefe was earlier saying not gonna lie the name experience and environment is great the team i'm in fantastic and very very welcoming that's freaking awesome i i, I love to hear that that you're freaking enjoying yourself hefe that actually means the world to me uh especially that i'm that we're able to sort of create an environment like that for you and you're just able to get along with everyone uh have a good day hey see you hefe appreciate you for joining on in okay so what we're gonna do is we also need to take um the lo-fi off now for those of you guys who don't know um we're actually using the uh black hokages um like uh, their little lo-fi music so i don't know if anybody knows them but they have a cool little lo-fi playlist so check it out if you want to uh listen to it in the background all right let's um let's do this so we got our we got our little thing going let me make sure my phone is on Okay, and we have our little prompt thingy this time. It's actually working now. So let's make sure this is uh, going the way it should. It's not because... Hold on. It's not on? It's not on. Uh, if you see me, like, looking out to... Uh, looking down on my... Or looking down, I'm looking at my phone. Oh, yeah, is a uh, perfect mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to TBH. So fun fact... um since you know tbh so do you uh Sokka, if you know um got a little smudge on the camera yeah it's like the thing over here or whatever yeah i don't know what that is bro it's not a smudge like i literally freaking clean the camera it's like the i think it's the lighting or it's like the glare or something i don't know what it is it won't go away it's it's bothering me so like once you see it you can't unsee it but don't worry tiktok won't be able to see it uh but as i was sort of saying um so if you know la chaos uh he's part of the gi crew i'm trying to fix the lighting or whatever so I actually know him uh, personally and stuff. I haven't talked, I, I granted, I haven't talked to him in years at this point, like since the beginning of COVID or so. But like, uh, I was actually uh, cool with him. We used to play a bunch of video games together and stuff. Um, I wish I got to know Ethos because Ethos is probably my favorite from the uh, GI crew. Yeah, fuck you, Chaos. No, I'm kidding. Uh, not Chaos is cool. Um, but I wanted to talk to Ethos. I know, funny enough, he's on my friends list somehow for like League. I don't know how we played League together, but apparently we did. But yeah, it's super, super cool uh they were definitely the one i always related to the most uh stuff but yeah chaos is hilarious we used to play we man we there was a bunch of games that we used to play there's not even like one single game that we'd play like consistently like we played a lot of world war z uh that game was super fun we'd play uh we play brawlhalla occasionally uh, and stuff man there's just so many games like we just played like a bunch like there was like a whole free-to-play era and um it was just like um whatever game there was like during COVID, we just play it <laughs> we just play it oh man my hair's fricked up because headphone dent oh, no. i need my freaking comb uh we're taking off our we're taking off like our headphones or whatever so like it'll just look better with the uh ad and stuff man i need my freaking i need my freaking comb but i do not feel like getting up to go do it i think it's fine i need a haircut though eh whatever who cares uh we'll do with glasses why not and all that stuff uh man 2018 to 2020 was uh, my pure discord gaming era especially uh 2020 yeah yeah i mean hey there wasn't shit else to do <laughs> all right so let's see if this thing is working it seems like it is all right cool all right, i think we're good all right let's uh let's rock and roll y'all let's rock and roll all right, you guys make fun of me as much as you want um, as we record this, but try our best. We'll try our best. All right. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to mark this on uh, Twitch. Let's do this. Would you ever pay your DM to run a D&D &D game? Well, hundreds of people... Well, hundreds of people happily pay $100 a month to play in our D&D &D games, but why? 
For the past five years, I've ran this D&D &D universe with dozens of professional DMs running campaigns that affect each other in real time in this D&D &D MMORPG. I'm talking cameos, crossovers, or I'm talking cameo. I'm talking cameos, crossovers, and even 15 player raid bosses with players having an absolute blast. Yes, that's 15 players. And though I've done it for five years, I'd like for you to be a part of the next five. We'll find you, we'll find you a gaming group and we'll find you a game and a group even if you're new. That fits your schedule. So you never have to worry about a game fizzling out before it even begins again. But it's not just about the game similar to a, wait, not just the game similar to the West Marches. But it's not just a game similar to a West Marches. It's a monthly experience that goes beyond the D&D table. But how? Well, well, we actually mainly focus on community building as we have a dedicated staff team that hosts weekly community events and hangouts so you and others can make friends in and out of the game. So if you think this is if you think this is a cool idea and you want to help grow if you think this is a cool idea and want to help it grow to something big, join the Discord. And if you want to play and leave a legacy for other players to define decades from now, oh, hold on, I can do that again. Let's do that again. If you think this is a cool idea and want to help it grow to something big, join the Discord. If you want to also help and play, if you also want to play and leave a legacy for other players to find decades from now, apply to be a player. And to celebrate our upcoming 2024 launch, new players can join for... G <laughs> Gotta do it again. Oh, God. I'll have to edit this out and then I'll throw the bot in together. But... And to celebrate our upcoming 2024 launch, new players can join now for just the price of a large pizza every week at $15 a week for the rest of the year. But act fast, that offer lasts only until September 22nd. But that offer lasts until the 22nd. And after that, it goes back to $100 monthly. And after that, it goes back to $100 monthly. And remember, we have to cap out 20 new players to ensure the best experience for everyone. But there's something else. D&D is always better with friends, so join now and you can bring a friend to play for free for a month with you. Click on the link in my bio or description to join or lose out. Hold on. Click on the link in my bio or description to join or... Ah, I hate this. Ah, ah, ah. Try it one more time. Click on the link in my bio or description to join or lose out on your chance to be a part of something big from the beginning. Hold on, let's try that again. Let me make this more clear. Click on the link in my bio and join the... Click on the link in my bio or check out the description to join or lose out on your chance to be a part of something big from the beginning. So, will you join? Time to decide. All right. There we go. Uh, we did it. It took a... Oh, man. There's so many mistakes in that uh, freaking recording, but we got it. We'll just... We'll fix it up. We'll fix it up. We'll, we'll figure it out. All right. Let's mark it down. Got a marker. And cool. Awesome. That only took a, this took a little bit, but uh, whew, that's gonna take some that's gonna take some editing. Right, let's get the music back on. Um, uh, I think we're good to go now. Alrighty, we'll fix it in post. Exactly, bro. <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm doing it one take. I'm not dealing with this shit. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, uh, so that's basically what Project Aurora is about. We're about to do the whole thing where, like, even though it's a hundred dollars monthly, typically we're gonna do a thing where you guys can just jump in for. $60 and it'll be $60 for the rest of the year. Um, and then you can even bring in a friend in for to play with you for free uh, for a month or so. So yeah, um, super, super cool stuff. Um, I want to just do that to uh, celebrate the big launch coming in 2024 and just get as many people in here so we can, or we can basically just build up the project even further, right? All right, uh, I ain't got too much uh, to do else. Uh, seems to be that we, uh, this is just a little fun little stream. But um, we're, we're gonna do for the next five-ish minutes, we'll do a quick Q&A and then I'm gonna prepare for, or not prepare, but more so. I gotta take care of a couple of things before my uh, Aurora meeting. So let's fix the overlay up. Uh, uh, too far, too far. There we go. Um, but yeah, uh, if you guys have any questions uh, in general about anything, whether it's D&D uh, &D related, whether it's Project Aurora related, whether it's um, business related or finance related or whatever the heck, I, I don't really care um all things are fair game on such as what we do for the reason why we do these streams as i mentioned at the beginning of it is that we're just basically here to document the journey and then just show you guys a little bit of insights into what i do whether that is the thought processes or whether that is whether that is actually working on well aurora and such 
um i just want to take you guys along for the ride because i think it'd be really cool if matt mercer when they were just starting critical role or they were running their dnd games we got to see like hey Hey everybody, Matt Mercer here, day 22. Um, our my kit or my players just literally freaking are insane. They're genuine chaos gremlins. Travis did this crazy sort of play with uh, the likes of uh, Sam and his character Scanlan, blah, 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 blah. And I think it would just be super cool to sort of just get the insights and like the thought process and how he did it. And I'm not saying that I'm Matt Mercer or anything like that, but not even close, I'm far from it. But I just wanna at least just document this sort of whole thing just in case anything does happen with project door not plan. if it does it does cool we'll be ready but if it doesn't it's all good at least uh, we can sort of use it to um kind of just look back on for me myself a couple years from now and just be like oh man i remember when i was doing this and hopefully it'll be even better uh, by then so yeah if you guys have any questions about anything um at all feel free to ask i'm going to set some stuff up and yeah super 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 cool stuff today all right, we got a bunch of DMs that we're going to need to go over uh, in a bit, so hmm. we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, Man, what is one thing? So I guess to ask myself a question, what is one thing that I really want to, uh, what, what is the vision? What is the goal for 2024 for Project Aurora? I think the goal for uh, Project Aurora 2024 is that we're we're doing I, I know it's kind of like the I, I hate to say it's like the new year new me thing but it's more so we're setting up the foundations are uh, resetting the foundation for what we want aurora to be in 2024 now that we have the resources available and the knowledge available to really hit a home run with it i think um this year was definitely just like a big big learning experience figuring out what works figuring out what doesn't work figuring out what systems we kind of need in place to be able to make things like kind of function and not irritate individuals either, either from a staff side or even from a player side. And then now that we have this bit of information, not saying that we're going to make it perfect now in 2024, it's more so we have the, we're equipped with the knowledge to be able to truly make something insane. Now, Grant, what we got here is freaking ridiculous already, but I, I want to make it even better. I, I just want to make it even better for the players and just have them be able to sort of rave about it every single week like i want aurora if it's possible in the future to be the thing that everybody is looking uh, forward to um from a week to week basis you know after working uh their nine to five job or whether they were just sort of bored hanging out going to school or whatever the heck they're doing they show up and they're freaking they have it penciled in on their calendar and they're just waiting they're just they're ready they're they're ready kind of like the phrase for a critical role where is it thursday yet i want them to be able to like say is it blank yet for whenever the game is coming you know that's what that's what i would love to see and i think uh now that, i think it's going to be just more so executing it uh executing it and going from there i know um one of the things that we wanted to do in aurora was we wanted to focus on um how you say content creation and like really start leaning into that sort of uh, area so then we could have it where not only do we have like uh uh vods and stuff like we're actually like documenting the history of like aurora um in real time but also so we can help out with like just showing more and more people like here's a cool way how uh to play DD and whether you want to play DD this way it's up to you but this is how we play DD and we'd like to play DD with you right so um i think we're still going to try to shoot for that i am i think it's more so on the back burner sadly but we'll we'll see what we can do we'll, we'll see what we can do i think it's going to be a case of what the dungeon masters uh for aurora are able how much they're able to contribute um and such like work wise obviously we're paying them and stuff so it, it's going to really fall down to uh, that and if they're able to also stream their games amazing 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 um but yeah i think that would be um one of the things that uh, we're probably looking to um sort of nail and i think uh the last sort of thing i mentioned i keep mentioning it every sort of stream the website it's gonna be it's gonna like it's going to basically eliminate a lot of headaches for everyone like from the player side and even a staff side like we've had individuals where they just don't necessarily know where their next game is or when it's scheduled so the website's going to basically take care of all of that and also when it comes to you basically like uh, with the website we're going to have it where um 
you get even if you don't necessarily know whether your schedule um fits for D, D or anything like that or whether you don't necessarily have friends to play D, &D with bro you're going to be able to just check out the website see all the D, &D games times and then make an informed decision um right then and there before you really have to commit to anything anything at all and you get to know that hey actually we're able to solve your D, &D scheduling issues and problems right here and there just play some D, &D. oh that's all you got to focus on just playing D, D. so yeah super exciting stuff but all right y'all um we ain't got any more questions so thank you guys again for being able to tune into the stream i really like that D, &D solutions yeah you know like <laughs> we're just trying to uh we're, we're trying to tackle a lot of the like sort of biggest D, D issues um that we possibly can um you know that are feasible i think two of the biggest D, &D issues are our scheduling issues and then also players finding a group so if we can at least tackle those two things from the start then we're good and then i think the third one is just like what what would the third one be i would say like i guess the campaign getting canceled eventually yeah i think a, i think a campaign being canceled a lot of the time campaigns get canceled because of scheduling issues or whatever so it kind of inherently increases the percentages of that but once we tackle the uh sort of i guess burnout sort of thing on a player side and um a dm side and i think we're good people in time schedule uh last things well yeah that's uh yeah that, that, that's typically what it is i guess yeah but we're gonna take it one step at a time so thank you guys again for being able to tune into the stream you guys are freaking awesome this is episode seven of the dnd sensei show um we're gonna be live again on monday uh as we're going to be basically going through the thought process again but if you actually want to see some dnd in aurora then what you're gonna do is you're gonna need to do two things for me one you're going to need to head over to the youtube channel and then two you're going to i guess subscribe um to get notified when we go live again we're actually going to be going live again on youtube at 4 p.m eastern time as we're going to have the vod for uh the our recent campaign that just started only a couple of days ago and you guys can be able to see that once more or jump on in for the first time so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to youtube i'll drop the link um over here in a second oh i misspelled youtube you're gonna go over here click that link and then you're gonna hit the subscribe button so you get notified when that goes live thank you guys again so much and i will see you all in the next one peace